Hi guys, I received a word from the Lord on February 22nd, 2014. The title of it is The Preparation of God's Army. And I'm going to go ahead and read that to you now. My children, are you ready for what lies ahead? If I am your heart's delight, you are indeed ready. If this world is your heart's delight, I say to you, repent now. Do not love this world or the things in it. Where are your treasures, my children? Are they in this world or the world to come? Do not allow your heart to be fixed upon the things of this world that are quickly passing away. No, my beloved, fix your eyes on heavenly things. Fix your eyes on those things that will never pass away. Lay up for yourself selves treasures in heaven because soon all the things that may that many strive so hard for will pass away where is your hope where is your trust let me be the delight of your heart i will not fail you in the darkness i am there in the in the hard times i may be found find me now I desire to commune with you. I desire to show you the hidden things. I desire to make your heart firm and steadfast, ready and able to do every good work. I desire to replace all fear with the boldness of a lion. I desire to make your forehead harder than flint. I desire to teach your hands to war. A mighty army you are indeed if you remain one with me. I have placed you high above all principalities and powers. My beloved, you sit with me. You have nothing to fear. Trust me, my children. Will I not complete the good work I have begun in you? Is my timing not perfect? Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this word. Lord, help us, God, to... Lord, just to forsake the things of the world, Lord God, and to put the things, the heavenly things, the heavenly treasures, God, foremost in our heart, Lord. Lord, help us to focus on your kingdom and help us to focus on you, Lord, and to trust you, God, with our whole heart. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that, that we are in you and we sit with you in heavenly places. Father, we praise your holy name. Thank you so much, God, for all that you do for us. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I do want to read some scriptures with this one. Uh, I'm going to begin in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And it says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Okay, guys, we know that the Lord, you know, this is not saying that, that we can't have things, that God doesn't want us to be blessed or to have things or to have fun, to enjoy things, uh, of course he does want us to do that because all good things comes down from him and he loves us and he wants us to enjoy those things. But what it's talking about is talking about sin, number one. Uh, you know, we're never to, to enjoy that or to partake of that because that is not for us. But the, th the good things of this world, the good things of this world can be a sin as well if we put it before God, if we put it before His kingdom, if we lust after those things, if those things, the good things of this world, if that is our, our heart's desire, and if that's what we strive and live for, then, then yes, then that is love in the world. That is putting the world before the kingdom. That's putting the world before God. Even the good things of the world can be sin if we allow it to be. Okay, I'm going to read Matthew 6.33 and it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Just confirmation. God wants us to seek Him first, to seek His kingdom first, to let Him and His kingdom be the, our heart's desire, the, the true delight of our life. 
And when we do that, then we're advancing his kingdom and we're laying up our treasures in heaven. Not in this world, because the things of this world are passing away. You can hoard up all kinds of things, but it's not going with you. <laughs> it's not going with us when we leave here. So it's not important. Okay. Ezekiel 3, 7 through 9. And it says, But the house of Israel will not listen to you, for they will not listen to me. And all the house of Israel are strong of forehead and hard of heart. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces, and your forehead strong against their foreheads. I have made your forehead as an adamant, as an adamant harder than flint. Do not be bowed down by their faces, though they are a rebellious house. Guys, we know that a time of severe persecution is coming. And the Lord, you know, wants us, this is part of our training, is, I hate to say it like this, but to be hard-headed. <laughs> to be hard-headed against the devil, to be hard-headed against the ways of the world, because we're, they're going to come against us, and they're going to want us to deny Christ. They're going to want us to say that there's many ways to the Father, that Jesus is not the only way, and they're going to want us to deny many parts of our faith and they're going to say that we're haters if we don't and they're going to want us to say that everything's okay abortion's fine perversion is fine promiscuity is fine everything you know it's all good you know not to call sin sin and uh and, and there's going to come a time and it's already that way but we haven't seen anything yet where we're going to have to be hard. We're going to have to be strong. You know, that's what the Lord is saying here. He wants us to be strong. And as we submit ourselves to Him, He is. He will do that. He, he will make you bold, fierce, strong, so that no matter what kind of persecution, no matter what people say, we're not supposed to care about the opinions of man. Whether people love us or hate us, we're supposed to be the same. You know, it's, it's the opinion of God that matters. And when we spend, you know, this is part of your training. This is part of our end time training is to, uh, to, to, you know, to, to get to that place where you just don't care. You don't care what the world thinks or says about you. You, you, you know, you, you only care what does God say. You know, he's our judge. He's our judge. And he's, you know, men may be able to destroy the body, but the Bible says that the Lord, he can destroy both, uh, both the body and the, and the spirit and the soul. He can destroy the whole man. And uh, so, but God is our God. And we love Him. And we want to please Him. And we want to obey Him. And so, that's part of our training is Him making us bold and courageous. Um, somewhere in the Word, it, it talked about making our foreheads hard, hard as flint. And that are harder than flint. And flint is a rock, and it's a really hard rock. Uh, they used to, a long time ago, they used to use it to make uh, arrow, arrowheads and uh, axe, axe heads with it because it was so hard. And uh, so, yes, that's what the Lord is saying. You know, He don't want us to be rebellious and hard-headed toward Him. He wants us to be tender and soft and obedient to Him, but hard-headed hard to the world. Okay, I'm going to read one more and then I'm going to wrap it up here. This is Psalm 144.1. And it says, Blessed is Jehovah my rock, who teaches my hands for war, my fingers for battle. I'm not sure what all this means, but I do know that the Lord teaches us how to battle. You know, He, he teaches us how to stand against the forces of darkness and to win the battle. Uh, you know, when I you know, meditated on this word, what that brought back to, to my mind was a lot of times, I don't know if any of you experience this or not, you probably do, but in my worship time, sometimes I feel very compelled to use my hands in worship, and sometimes I'm pulling things down, or I'm pushing things up. I mean, I feel like I'm working. I don't know if you guys will understand that, but when, I, when, I'm, uh, when I'm in an intense time of worship, I, my hands are doing things. I, it's almost like speaking in tongues. You know, it just comes from my, you know, just like tongues comes from our spirit. You know, we just speak what the, the Holy Spirit gives us, that Holy Spirit utterance. 
Well, many times when I worship, I feel like the Holy Spirit is giving my hands utterance. You know, I'm moving things around in the realm of the Spirit. You know, there's a lot of things that we don't understand. And, uh, you know, and that's what, that's what it makes me think of, that I'm, I'm doing, I'm working. <laughs> and my hands are working, and the Lord is teaching my hands to do war, and I'm, I'm doing things in, in the realm of the, the heavenlies. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that this scripture speaks about that, and I'm sure it speaks about other things as well. But anyway, uh, the Lord is doing a great work in each one of us. And I don't know about you guys, but I can tell you even, I mean, it's, it's ever-changing for me. It's every time I go into the presence of the Lord, God is just doing things in me. I you mean, know, He still is taking out and putting in. And uh, the last several days, I've just, you know, I've just, just, just been weeping in His presence, you know, and I don't know. I just know that God is doing things. <laughs> he's rearranging. He's changing things. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say except he's just, I believe he's just infusing me more and more and more with himself and giving me more and more and more his character. And I know that it's a great work that God is doing. He's doing, he's doing astounding. He's doing amazing things in his children in these last days. He's preparing us. The end time army of God, he's awakening us and he is preparing us for these last days. He's a good God. He's not going to leave us um, unprepared. He's not going to leave us unprepared. So I just challenge you and I encourage you, go into the presence of the Lord often. Spend time with him. Read his word and just meditate on him. Just commune with him, listen to him, and, you know, talk to him and listen to him. Spend time worshiping him. Just set that time. And I know I say that a lot, but, but that, you know, this is just one of the messages that God has given me to, to, to bring to the church. You know, to he's wanting his children to come into a deeper place of intimacy with him, communing with him, listening to him, talking to him, and worshiping him, and letting him just prepare us and do whatever he needs to do in us. Well, that's all I have for today. God bless you guys. I love you. Bye-bye.